Hi, this is Chris. Today I'm going to show you how you can consume a SOAP web service and transform it into JSON, like an omnichannel service that can be consumed by any app or web. Many web services are provided according to the SOAP standard, whether they are publicly available on the internet or internal services provided by backend systems. SOAP is based on XML and SOAP even adds more metadata to the already verbose XML format. Therefore, we have a lot to win in terms of bandwidth and performance by transforming the information to the much more efficient JSON format. As with most omnichannel services, this way we can also make sure that only the information that is needed is transferred. This time, the example is a public SOAP web service provided by the cent Swedish Central Bank and it allows us to query the exchange rate related to Swedish currency, which is called Kronor. The idea is that an app could allow the user to select a year and a month and then show a list of the average exchange rates for that month. Even if it's a simple example, there is not much difference with getting information from a backend systems like SAP, Siebel or PeopleSoft. In a real world scenario, the work of the service would be divided into different tiers with specific responsibility, as I've shown in previous videos. So let's start by looking at how we request the web service with SOAP. This is the body of the HTTP request. And as you can see, um, it's an XML format and that SOAP is adding a significant overhead in terms of metadata to send the three parameters. And this uh, is what we get back from the web service. And just as in the request, there is a lot of metadata and overhead uh, to the two pieces of the information that we want to send back to the app which is what you can see here, a very slim array of currency code and average exchange rates in JSON format. So let's take a look at the code. Uh, this is the PHP code that calls the web service and transforms the data to JSON. So at first uh, we get the two parameters on line two and three, and then we create a SOAP client on line four and we call it with the parameters on line 5. The result uh, is the XML in the, in the tag inside the body tag of the SOAP response. So for each exchange rate uh, on line 7, the currency code and average is parsed on line 10 and 11 and added to an array on line 12 that we created on line 6. And then a root object is added on line 14 uh, with some headers on 15 and 16. And finally, we transform the response to JSON on line 17. To put this code on a server, uh, please see the end of my previous video. And I have a link there in the description to the right place. Uh, and then it can be called with the, with the URL that you see uh, below and you replace the four zeros with the IP address of your server. And there you have it. You have created your first omnichannel service that consumes a SOAP web service, and then it can be called by any app or web. Thank you.